Hello everybody, welcome back as ever to Dungeon Maker here on the World of Madness server in front of our wonderful little cottage. And not a lot has happened down here for the simple reason that I realized if I wanted to move barrels and use those as actual meaningful storage inside of the cottage, I actually need to make sure that all of my villagers over there already have their professions or else they'll try to put a workspace in my house. So, that that's... We, we, I am going to try moving things over, but it might just end up being in, like, chests for a fair bit. But the main bulk of our jobs today revolve around over here. So we need to actually terraform this island, and we need to actually get a nice aesthetic outside onto our cat-powered creeper farm here which I didn't know this was a feature, but actually has a secondary function, which is that if I'm up there for so long that I don't sleep, and so consequently phantoms start spawning, every time that they get within about 16 blocks of this thing, the building hisses and they fly away. It's kind of entertaining to see. But we have a lot of gunpowder. A lot, a lot of gunpowder. Oh dear lord, so much gunpowder. So. We also need to fly over to spawn to the shopping district and set up a nice little shop to actually start selling gunpowder at I think about the rate of a diamond for eight gunpowder or a diamond block nine for a stack of fight duration free rockets. That seems like reasonable economics to me. But we do want to put a lighthouse kind of covering on this and I, I think I know what this island is going to be called by the sheer value of this thing being so heavily populated by cats. Uh, I think we're gonna make this into the Cat's Paw Island, and consequently the Cat's Paw Lighthouse. So, yeah, that's gonna be fun. And before we get to that, real quick though, there is a little bit of a change going on around here. Uh, you might have spotted them running around. We do have some new wildlife here, uh, which is to say that we have foxes on the island now, which means that there is a fun little thing that I get to actually implement. So if all of you didn't know already, uh, I am heavily associated with foxes for a long story of a reason, but uh, I also, semi-unrelated, uh, run a Patreon, and that is the only way that I am able to survive. That is my only source of income that keeps me afloat, and we've had a pretty rough month this past July, so I've been racking my brain trying to think of ways to expand the Patreon and make it more appealing and all sorts, and I came up with an idea. So, here are some of my top patrons, and there you go. So, if you become a patron, I'm gonna find a tame fox, tame because they have to not run away from me constantly, uh, and you're gonna get a name tag on them. So I can just, I can get name tags fairly easily, I can breed foxes fairly easily, just need to get some sweet berries in a position around here that won't cause the wildlife to die off quite quickly. And there are some tamed foxes around here that are also already named. Uh, I just need to find them there, of course. Oh, hello there. Are you tamed? Yes, you're tamed. Yeah, there you are. You are Wolf Sparrow, who I think is currently my top patron, so hey! Would you, would you like some sweet berries? Would you like some sweet berries? No? Okay, catch you later then, I guess. No? Have you changed? You've changed your mind. Okay, there you go. Have. No? There you go. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> yeah, we've got a few around already. Uh, we'll see if we can find some more, because I've still got another three names, and I'm working my way through the current extant list. Uh, I think I've got about a dozen so far done, but there's something like close to 30 at these like these days, so. And there's about, I think about eight, like six or, yep, yeah, you're one of the wild ones. There's, I think there's about eight or so that are, uh, why do you have just, a, okay, fine. Well, you appear to be tame, so consequent, because otherwise you'd be running for me. So there we go, our Jakes. And if I could find somebody else, I could probably breed you with something. Uh, and is my, are my signs off? Nope, they're just kind of quiet. Hmm. Weird. Okay, who's up here? Is, is, is random, is random untamed fox up here? Anybody else? Whoop. Espa! Hey, good to see you. 
Okay, Esper, I might need to call in a favor with you. Hang on. Nope. Okay, over there. And then if you could kindly come over here, that would be very helpful, because I'm going to need a lot of foxes. And if we can end up with this island basically coated in named tame foxes by the end of the season, then I think we'll be doing okay. Which, then I guess, brings me on to other details of the day, which is the long-term plans for this entire island. Um, let's, let's talk about that, like, after the gunpowder shop, I guess. So, I'm going to pack up a bunch of stuff, and we're going to head on over to the... Oh, hello. Oh, <laughs> that is from Night Fox because he needed some bones for a thing, so I let him just borrow some from our massive stack of stuff here. Yeah, but let's get rid of this because that's going to give us an unwarranted uh, fisherman. There we go. But thank you, Night Fox. That's really, uh, very appreciated. Anyways, as the sun rises, off to spawn. Oh yes, one other quick little update is that the pumpkin farm is now 100% complete. And uh, getting a little on the noisy side, considering how frequently it fires now. <laughs> Oop, excuse me. Just coming down here to check. Yeah, that's doing quite nicely. Mmm. Good, good for trading, that. Okay, now, for real. Oh, oh dear. Uh, frond, frond. Yeah, you don't want to be in there. <laughs> I might need to put a fence around this now, come to think of it. We don't want any of our patron foxes getting crushed. Oh, and you appear to be one of the wild ones. Okay, yeah, that's not our checks. <laughs> and here we are at what is currently spawn. Which, uh, does, it, it, it's weird to have a campsite just sort of being subsumed by a shopping district, <laughs> but, uh, at least, at least in my experience of campsites. Uh, but here we have the shoppers. So there's the old little enchanting station we had. There's the fishing station that I set up way back when and trying to just figure out the best way to get treasure. Ah, uh, and here's my old little home. Ah, which does not have dreadfully much in it, obviously, because I... Quite naturally grabbed most of it before I left, but uh, here it is, yeah. And uh, if you follow these lovely little lamps set up by Night Fox, we can find what current stores are available. Uh, ooh, looks like somebody's selling Blackstone. Is that Blackstone? I don't recall what it's called, but okay. Yep, Blackstone, Bargain City, any stack, one diamond. Ooh, this is only found in a structure I've... Ad admittedly, oh, this is apparently mostly stalled out. Polished blackstone bricks, blackstone. Ooh, I could probably use those for like shingles at some point. Hmm. Cracked blackstone. Yeah, this is evidently someone's just dismantled a bastion. <laughs> but hmm. Yeah, I could I could probably use some of these for like some roofing and such. That'd be nice. Maybe it's a bit too dark. I don't know. You like you guys, let me know. And then continuing with the theme, apparently we have other never blocks. I don't know if this color scheme is necessarily easy on the eyes, but here we are. Uh, crimson stems, okay, so this is all of the... Yeah, this is basically the new flora, for the most part. Ooh, and apparently redstone, for some reason. All the red stuff, I guess. Is there a sign? There's... there are signs? Nope. It, there's... oh. <laughs> Bloody blocks. Okay, yeah, that makes... that makes sense. I do not have... An ender chest. I probably do need to actually like find a never fortress and get a hold of some stuffs because I, yeah, that's probably gonna be important later. Uh, Bee Works still running. I don't know who 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 operates Bee Works. Uh, is there a name? Please be communal for the most part. Maybe it's run by you. Do you do you have a name? No. Okay. Well, I presume it's run by that yellow sheep then. Oh, and somebody has also taken on an ocean monument. By looks of this. I believe this might be George? Because I know I know somebody has a guardian farm that puts the FPS duck of the Hubris Harvester last season to shame, to say the least. Now, unfortunately, the road ends here, and there's a billboard, or at least I presume this is some kind of notice board, right here, but I don't 100% know where, then, I should put our gunpowder store. Hmm. Generally speaking, when you're selling a whole ton of gunpowder, you don't really want it in the middle of everything. You want to make sure it's fairly, uh, f fairly remote, because if it if, if if it goes off, then obviously you're going to lose a significant chunk of retail. Um, but let's uh, 
uh, this this seems like a decent enough place. Just put it right next to the place where everyone's going to gather. I'm sure nothing bad could possibly happen. Uh, might need to fill in this water. We could flatten this area or expand this ledging here, maybe? Mm -hmm. Well, let's jump into time lapse and see what I apparently inevitably figured out. And there we have it. So here we have, very simply, the gunpowder store. Evidently we have a uh, a, a patron already. Uh, every night today is just all about patrons. Huh. So this is designed off of what you would actually store gunpowder in, a literal gunpowder store, uh, which means it's very simplistic. It's built more for structural stability than aesthetics. I might... Uh, muck up the edges and like the uh, roof a little bit later as well but uh it's a cordoned area to limit the capacity of people to wander into or something that might explode and it's uh it's well lit it's a lot more lit than stuff we've built on the island because here in spawn we actually have to worry about things uh, i've got a little secret hidey hole here for shop supplies as it were and if we go through here we have a reinforced door and lots of light in here, so hopefully no mobs spawn. But I haven't checked all the light levels just yet. And most of these most of these barrels are filled with eight stacks of gunpowder because we are selling gunpowder at one diamond per eight. And then this back section, which I haven't filled out entirely, is nine diamonds to sixty-four rockets. So that should hopefully get us some nice little uh, moolah. And I do think I want to put maybe a crafting table in here for like the convenience of nothing else and definitely a uh an ender chest but uh for the time being that is it so anybody on the server if you want some rockets to fly around the gunpowder store is now open for business and with that our business at, at uh, spawn is complete so uh back to the island so, here we are back at Cat's Paw Island, and obviously the first thing I'm, I want to do is actually terraform this to resemble a cat's paw. So a sort of big central kind of section, and then like so like three or so littler islands, kind of sort of semi-ovular, uh, just around here, to make this look like an actual cat's paw, sort of vaguely, if you were a cartographer and thinking up a name for it. Then, we also want to actually build an actual full-blown lighthouse exterior going up here. And the obvious thing to do would be to get a whole bunch of red and a whole bunch of white and make it be, like, the classical, like, postcard image of a lighthouse, like, whenever you Google lighthouse. But that feels like it might be a bit strong to me. That feels like it's also a little bit, like, cheap and easy and everybody's done that a thousand different times so i would prefer this to be like a more reserved kind you know there's a lot there's a lot of lighthouses especially early on before that whole stereotype started that were much more sort of like rocky and grayish by comparison especially some of the earliest lighthouses they had nothing of the sort of the bright white and red 
So, we're gonna be trying for that. I know that's a lot of kind of grays throughout uh, this episode so far. Um, but we want to be trying to focus on, like, I think for the sort of rural fishing village kind of aesthetic of our little, like, settlement here on the island, we want to be focusing on sort of grays and reds with splashes of natural color rather than bright, luminous colors like that. So, for this island, we're going to be going, once again, with a spot of grey, adding in detail to make things look quite nice. So, for instance, if you want to, if you want to do a comparison, uh, over here on our rooftop, we do actually have some visual distinction going, because we have the grey of the polished andesite, we then have some raw andesite that kind of works not quite perfectly, but it works well enough. And then there's also splashes of stone, as well as splashes of stone brick. And that gives the actual, like, surface and visual of our roof here, which is pretty much just completely grey, actual texture, so it looks like there's more stuff going on. And uh, I might dash back to spawn and buy, some, buy up some blackstone for a, a level of this particular lighthouse. But, without any further ado, let's, uh, let's see if I can figure out how to draw a circle again. Because that's been a while. One quick trip back to spawn to buy up some blackstone, which is actually surprisingly cheap, it's one stack per diamond. And we have ourselves the makings of an actual, full-blown lighthouse on Catspaw Island. I do need to, I think, spruce up the uh, terrain at the bottom here, so that it's not just a litany of torches and it's just clean grass. But, we've got the breaking up here at the bottom, which manages to expand the circle so that we don't have to have a huge circle to encompass the whole structure, so just barely under here is our sugarcane farm. Then the majority of the structure itself is stone, but we've mixed that up with a bit of polished andesite at the base with some smatterings of raw andesite going up. And of course, at the top there we have bits of white concrete, and let me see if I can still get up here, yep, there we are. Uh, and our black stone, which is allowing us to get a nice high contrast section, which should hopefully be, uh... It, 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 it should stick out in the night, I guess is the main thing. Obviously, we don't have a huge concern for, like, actual shipping traffic, but, you know, it's a start. And uh, we've got some shroom lights in here, which we've uh, also used over with our mob grinder, as well as over areas, so hopefully that uh, does well to sort of illuminate things and keep things uh, decently consistent. Uh, obviously a cottage and a lighthouse are not built by the same architect, so having them be identical wouldn't make too much sense. And we've got three floors, so we've got a ground, a first, and a second, and then here we are where our light will go. Now I'd like to have a full redstone powered uh, chaser light, so it sort of simulates the light that just sort of spins around warning any nearby ships and such that might be coming near, that sort of thing. Uh, but for right now we'll just leave this as is, because I need a lot more glass in order to uh, get that going, or also at the very least I need a lot more glowstone, both of which I don't have in huge supply. And for the platform above where we actually sit and AFK, I think I'm just going to try and make 
essentially just a cloud out of glass blocks and such up there, and I'll just fly up whenever I'm running a little bit low on gunpowder, and then we can just sit there for a little bit. But otherwise, I want to reroute the uh, item elevator that currently takes the items out of the uh, kill feed down there and actually just transports them up to here. Ow. I am not used to using scaffolding. Oh, hey, hey. Uh, so I want to take this and just lift it up there to our sort of ground floor area where we can then just collect everything in a much closer kind of proximity to where we're going to be standing. And that will require shoving that into the outing elevator as well. I could theoretically add a secondary one and just distinguish them, or I can use a, uh, an actual item filter up there. Either one will work, really. But we are getting plenty of gunpowder and plenty of sugarcane, so I don't expect that we're going to be running out of rockets anytime soon. I'm currently carrying about three stacks of them anyways. And I think... It's it's maybe a little shorter than we than you might be uh, like familiar with seeing lighthouses, but short lighthouses do exist. It all depends upon uh, sea level and like the actual elevation and whatnot. So, uh, you know, it, it's it's fine. I think it works good, and I think that the appearance of it looks really nice. That sort of high contrast gradient there is really cool. Especially the noise that we've managed to add here, just by varying up the bits of types of stone that we've used in here. It looks really nice. I might build up the bottom bait a little bit more, and uh, yeah, just want to get some, like, uh, some sparse grass, as well as some hidden lighting, I think. If we could, we obviously can't have this be, like, completely unlit like we can with the island, but uh, the more we can hide the lighting there, I think, very good. But, uh, on to actual major plans for the island, because right now we're, we, we've, we've mentioned offhand, more or less, that we're going to be trying to make a nice little fishing village here, and what kind of styles we're going to be trying to have it, and that kind of thing, but uh, we actually have quite a bit of plan up here. Are you a tamed, unnamed fox? Nope, no you're not. Try. Right. I was hoping to get a few, a few more names done. I might have just, have just like, corral the, the wild foxes. Hmm. At least then I might know where they are. Huh. But yeah, so, uh, we have, in my study in the cottage, we actually have three maps that show us where everything is and the full extent of our island here. Uh, that section over there, I'm still not 100% certain. It's, it, I think that is actually not ocean biome. I think over there is actually meant to be there, unlike uh, Cat's Boar Island. But... Consequently, uh, we, we're, that's also going to spawn a whole ton of mobs, and we don't really want to deal with that as much as we can. We only really want to spawn mobs where we actually want there to be mobs. So, yeah, it's just kind of kind of a concern. But, anyways, here is our full overview. I can probably update this now, I think. Uh, not quite close enough, but yeah. So there's Catsport Island, as it appeared before our little uh, time-lapsing there. And here we have the section that has been grassed over. And the area that still remains, we're about, uh, we're, we're about two-thirds of the way, I would say. And we've got our pumpkin farm there, we've got our mob grinder there, and here, of course, we have our cottage. Now, a full village requires actual structures of, di of distinct purposes. And chief among those, of course, is housing, which I think is going to be the majority of this kind of stretch. And then over here, given that we're an island, we're going to need to import and we're going to need to fish and get other resources. So I think this will definitely end up being our sort of dock area. That's more or less where we started out. And then up on this hill, we have our nether portal and video game logic being what it is. I think that makes that a perfect place to put a church right next to the portal to hell. Um, and also I could do with that because uh, clerics from villagers will actually give us glowstone as well as redstone, so if we can get that going, that would be grand. I don't think we'll be in a position where we're going to start just, like, mass producing stuff via villagers, but just being able to have, like, that little trickle every time I go through something would be nice. Just to keep me from having to go mining a little longer, that sort of thing. I've done a lot of digging <laughs> lately just to get stone. Uh, I might just have to start a huge quarry of some kind. Maybe just, like, clearing out most of my branch mine upstairs. Uh, we're obviously going to have a lot of children. That's happened a lot with all the beds. So maybe ha maybe we can put, like, a school of some kind over here. There's an idea. Or maybe just along the uh, along the ocean front, as it were, looking out towards Catspaw Island. And then we also 
have a plan for a mini game this season. Of course, last season we had the mini game that was never quite fully realized because by the time it was semi finished, uh, the server was pretty much done with that season by a long ways. But this season, I think we can do something pretty quick, pretty easily, and with a lot of potentials for like fun to be had. And that is. Uh, a game mode that has been typified by the Trouble in Terrorist Town kind of style. So you have a group of people, and then one of them, or, well, one or more of them, is some kind of hidden traitor, and it's their job to get rid of the others, uh, and not be discovered, and if only traitors are remaining by the end of the game, then the traitors win. If the traitors are all wiped out, then the, uh, the other people, the non-traitors, the loyalists, I guess, win. And since we have a island that has no mob spawns, no hostiles of any kind, then we can actually have some real fun with the lighting. You get like a game mode that you can really play very safely in the dark at night. And that'd be really, really cool, I think. So probably over here, we can have this be some kind of maybe industrial kind of area and have there be like a warehouse and like some alleyways and such and maybe a few workplace hazards and as such that could be used to discreetly murder somebody. Uh, and we can definitely set up with redstone a way to ensure that there is only a proportion of traitors per actual like set of uh, set of players. So yeah, somewhere down here we are probably going to be putting our TTT mini game, and the majority of the place is then just going to be uh, incidental buildings that we need, so the XP grinder might be transformed into something a bit more industrial, that kind of thing, uh, but the majority of the place is just going to be housing. So that's, that is the main plan, and as with Cat's Poor Late House, we are going to be trying to make this place uh, fairly consistent with the greys. Uh, we don't want to be putting too much bright colouring on, especially because we've got a lot of that already with the grass and such. Uh, and we can't quite... Whoop. Well, thank you for that, Vines. Apparently I need to trim my house. But, uh, yeah, we, I, th I think the greys are a nice touch. Obviously the grass here isn't quite as, vi as uh, vibrant as it is over there, but I think this sets a good kind of, uh, sort of turn-of-the-century rural kind of style of appearance. Uh, so we'll probably try and keep this, uh, relatively like consistent across the rest of the island but yeah i like this obviously there's still a little bit more work to do that i'll probably do off camera you guys will see that next episode but uh next i definitely need to get all the grassing done over here and i also need to like burn through my backlog of foxes so uh I'm gonna maybe try and set up a breeding program for them just at the very least so i know who's where and whatnot but i hope you've all enjoyed i hope you like our new lighthouse and i will as ever catch you all next time. Your eyes are getting heavy. Your mind is feeling clouded. The sound of my voice is relaxing you. You feel an urge to support this and other content I produce by going to patreon.com slash lying where you can pledge and receive fun rewards for your obedience. You will remember to support patreon.com slash lying.